streets of Rome are full of surprises. Between the Vespas and the Pigeons, the gelato stands and the trattorias, fragments of the ancient city appear in places you'd never expect. Two years ago, I made a pair of videos about some of these hidden ruins. When I returned to Rome this spring, I decided to see if I could find a few more disguised or overlooked bits of antiquity. As it turned out, I found more than a few. The first of these hidden ruins was only a few blocks from my hotel. This is the church of San Bernardo alla Terme. As the Terme in its name suggests, this was once part of a bath. More specifically, it was part of the colossal baths of Diocletian. As I described in one of my earlier videos, the central frigidarium of those baths was converted into the church of Santa Maria degli Angeli. San Bernardo, a few modern blocks from Santa Maria, occupies a small rotunda that was once part of the bath's enclosure wall. Originally, it seems to have served as a monumental entrance to the bath complex. Preserved through the Middle Ages by its brick-faced concrete walls, it was consecrated in the 16th century and has been a church ever since. Not too far from San Bernardo, I detoured down the Via Incelci to check out a building I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, a late Roman mansion that has served since the Renaissance as a convent. Although the ancient doors and windows have been filled, the walls are still preserved to their original height. I headed next to the ancient Campus Martius, the area in the bend of the Tiber that became the heart of medieval and Renaissance Rome. Here, narrow streets wind through blocks of buildings whose foundations are Roman temples and theaters, and the ancient world seems to crop up at every corner, sometimes literally, as in the case of this colossal marble foot, which stands at one end of the aptly named Via del Pie di Marmo, that is, Marble Foot Street. The sandaled foot, about four conventional feet long, was found nearby centuries ago. The statue to which it belonged, which must have been something like 25 feet tall, likely stood in the sanctuary of Isis. The obelisk in the Piazza della Minerva likely came from the same source. A short stroll away on the Via del Arco della Ciambella, two battered masses of Roman concrete rear up from an otherwise nondescript row of houses. These belonged to the central rotunda of the Baths of Agrippa, Rome's first monumental bath complex. Marcus Agrippa, the right-hand man of Augustus, was also responsible for the original Pantheon, among much else. Like the Pantheon, these baths were rebuilt later. The fragments we see today date to the early 3rd century. Much more of the structure was still standing in the 16th century, when Palladio and other architects drew plans. One Renaissance noble, in fact, wanted to convert the ruins into a palace. But these plans never came to fruition, and the remains of the baths were gradually submerged beneath less ambitious houses. A short distance from the Baths of Agrippa, and only a block from the Pantheon, two granite columns stand beside a parking lot. These belonged to what was once one of the most grandiose structures in Rome, the Baths of Nero. Unlike the emperor who built them, these were universally admired. As the poet Marshall once remarked, there was no one worse than Nero, but there was nothing better than Nero's baths. Especially as reconstructed by Alexander Severus in the 3rd century, the baths were noted for their use of exotic stone. Two of the Pantheon's columns, damaged during the Middle Ages, were replaced by granite columns found in the ruins of Nero's baths, and a huge granite basin from the baths still serves as a fountain on the Via degli Stadorari. Although these fragments, along with the columns featured in the video, are the only remains visible from the street, the walls of the baths still survive up to three stories high inside some of the surrounding buildings. On the other side of the Pantheon, down a narrow alley known as the Vicola della Spada di Orlando, part of the ancient wall and the battered stump of a column protrude from the pavement. These almost certainly belong to a temple that Hadrian built for Matidia, his mother-in-law, a rare gesture in any age. A brisk five-minute walk from the Temple of Matidia, behind the Plaza Massimo alle Colonne, a column stands in a quiet courtyard. Nineteen centuries ago, this Cipollino marble column belonged to the Odeon of Domitian, a small theater constructed to house plays and musical competitions. It was the counterpart of Domitian Stadium, which is now covered by Piazza Navona. Domitian's Odeon is also buried, 
but the curved facade of the Plazzo Massimo, but on top of it, nearest the curve of its seating area. The column behind it likely belonged to the Odeon stage building. This fusion of Renaissance palace and ancient theater, I think, epitomizes the city of Rome, where so much history is visible and so much more is hidden. For more hidden ruins, check out my new video about the Roman fort of Vindolanda on Hadrian's Wall, where I toured the ongoing digs. I have a new book, Insane Emperors, Sunken Cities, and Earthquake Machines, More Frequently Asked Questions About the Ancient Greeks and Romans. It's a sequel to Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, and it's available for pre-order now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and through your local bookstore. If you're interested in more Told and Stone content, including my podcast, check out my channel, Told and Stone Footnotes. I also have a channel called Scenic Routes to the Past, which is dedicated to historically-themed travel. You'll find both channels linked in the description. Last but not least, please consider joining other viewers in supporting Told and Stone on Patreon. Thanks for watching.